Hey guys, it's Aman and Christina from, from Our Rich, Rich Journey. Journey. This week, we have a very special video for you guys. If you have been watching our channel, you know that we have over a hundred videos on financial independence and retiring early. And all of these videos can be very overwhelming. In fact, we created these videos as a diary of our journey towards financial independence. So sometimes the sequence doesn't always line up. And we've gotten a lot of questions from people asking us, where do they start their journey? How do they start investing in the stock market? And maybe if they're already investing, how do they optimize those investments for FIRE? Well, today we are sharing with you a course that we created that walks you through those steps from A to Z. So in this video, we are sharing with you a module from our course. And in this module, we are going to show you how to calculate your financial independence, retire early number, your fire number, the number that you would need in order to retire early. So we hope that you find this sample video from our course useful. Now remember, this is just a sample. It's a small snippet of our overall course and our overall course is more than four hours long. It has 21 modules and it has more than 30 handouts of summary notes, homework assignments and other resources. And it also includes a 19 page individual investment plan for you to work on throughout the course of this class. So if you guys want to see what else is in the course, we will leave a link in the description below. Other than that, enjoy this video on how to calculate your fire number and the 4% rule. So welcome to module number three. We are so excited because we're going to get into the investing aspects of this course. But before we pick our first investment, every investor should start with a goal in mind. You see, by establishing your goal upfront, you can better identify what investments you're going to make in the future. So in this specific module, we're going to talk about investment goals and we're going to talk also about how to calculate your fire number. But remember that we are doing all these modules in sequential order. So we really hope that you already went through module one and module two, because module two focuses on paying off your high interest credit card debt and also establishing an adequate emergency fund. So you should do those things before you start really moving into the details of how to invest. So whenever you start investing, whether or not you're investing in the stock market, in real estate, or you're starting a business, you always start with a goal in mind. Now, if you're taking this course, we are going to assume that your goal is to reach financial independence and to retire early or at a minimum just to reach financial independence. And in order to do that, you need to know what your FI or your FIRE number is. And this number is the amount of money that you need to accumulate in your investment portfolio in order to live financially independent and also to retire early. Now, Christina just pointed out two very interesting things. She said the amount of money you need in a stock portfolio to either one, be financially independent or two, financially independent and retire early. You see, the retire early part is all up to you, but achieving financial independence and what you do with it that all comes down to identifying what your financial independence number is. And once you achieve that financial independence number, it's your choice whether or not to retire early. But you cannot retire early unless you achieve financial independence. So we're going to talk about your FIRE number and we're going to use it synonymously with the FIRE number and the FI number. But just keep in mind, again, if you want to reach financial independence, it's the same thing as your FIRE number. So to calculate your FIRE number, all you have to do is estimate your annual expenses in early retirement. You take that number and you multiply it by 25. This is your FIRE number and this is the amount of money that you need to have in your investment portfolio in order to reach FIRE. Now note that Christina said your estimated annual expenses in retirement. Those are not your expenses right now. Those are the expenses that you identify will be when you retire, how much money it will cost you every single year to sustain your life in retirement. And that number is completely different than what you are spending right now to live your life. 
So what we want to do is we want to run some numbers with you because sometimes numbers make it more tangible and you can understand it better when we start placing numbers in. So let's give some examples. So let's say someone's calculated their estimated expenses in retirement and that those expenses total $50,000 a year. To calculate the person's fire number, we would just take 50,000 and multiply that by 25, which would give us 1.25 million. So in this example, this person's fire number would be $1.25 million. So let's say that this person was investing in the stock market. This means that this person would need to have $1.25 million in his stock portfolio in order to reach financial independence and to retire early. So before you run off and go calculate your fire number, it's important that you understand why we're saying 25 times your annual expenses. That 25 times your annual expenses in early retirement comes from something called the 4% rule. And the 4% rule became popular because of the Trinity study. So we're going to talk about the Trinity study right now and give you more details about the study, what it looked like and the conclusions of the study, because it's really important when you're understanding your fire number. I mean, we can tell people that you use 25 times your estimated annual expenses, but it's really better for you to really understand the meaning behind this and understand why it is that 25 times number. So let's talk about the Trinity study. So this study was conducted by a group of finance professors at Trinity University in Texas. The study calculated retirement portfolio success rates with various monthly withdrawal rate assumptions and various portfolio asset allocations. Now, Christina may have confused you with all of the <laughs> jargon she was throwing out. If you are new to investing, some of these terms may sound foreign to you. So we're going to slow these down a bit. But what Christina essentially said was that this study ran a bunch of different scenarios where it looked at various types of portfolios and it looked at portfolios that are made up of all stocks, portfolios that are made up of all bonds and portfolios that had a mix of the two. And based off of those makeups of the portfolio, how long those portfolios would last before they ran out of money based off of how much a person took out of those portfolios and how much a person takes out of a portfolio they refer to as a withdrawal rate. So they looked at withdrawal rates of 3%, meaning that someone would take 3% out of their portfolio, someone that would consistently take out 4% and someone that would consistently take out 5%. So with those different withdrawal rates, they looked at these portfolios and they looked at whether a portfolio was successful after a 30 year period, meaning whether there was still money in these portfolios at those different withdrawal withdrawal rates after 30 years. So let's get into the results of the study because this is where the explanation for the 4% rule comes from. Based off of this study, it was determined that someone with a retirement portfolio of 100% stocks could safely withdraw 4% from their investment account, adjusted for inflation each year and not run out of money over the course of 30 years. So just to emphasize that, this study showed that a portfolio that was made up of 100% stocks and had a withdrawal rate of 4% over a 30 year period had a 100% success rate. So in other words, the study showed a 100% success rate at a 4% withdrawal with a 100% stock portfolio. Now what's interesting is they also looked at different mixes. So they looked at a portfolio with 75% stocks, 25% bonds and also a 4% withdrawal rate. And they also found that this type of portfolio also had a 100% success rate, meaning that after 30 years, this type of portfolio would still have money in it. Now there is a point in this study where the results start to vary. So in this study, they found that portfolios with 50% stocks and 50% bonds had a much lower success rate than those other portfolios. They also found that when people stop taking that 4% withdrawal rate and start increasing it, say to like a 5% withdrawal rate, the success rate lowers. So the point is the more money you withdraw, the less likely your portfolio will be successful over a 30 year period. 
if you are starting to withdraw five, six, 10% of your total portfolio annually, the less likely that portfolio will have of success. So let's go over the specific results of the study and we'll actually also leave a link to the study so you can read it and go through it and really understand the details of this specific study. So like we already said, a portfolio with 100% stocks and 0% bonds at a 4% withdrawal rate had a 100% success rate after 30 years. The study found the same results for a portfolio with 75% stocks and 25% bonds. Now an investment portfolio of 50% stocks and 50% bonds at a withdrawal rate of 4%, the study found would only yield a 91% success rate after 30 years. And it gets even worse for someone with an investment portfolio of 25% stocks and 75% bonds. With this portfolio at a 4% withdrawal rate, the Trinity study determined that the success rate was only 65%. So again, seeing those numbers, those are all related to the 4% withdrawal rate. If you go higher and you start withdrawing more at a higher rate, the success rate of these portfolios lower. So that is the basis of the 4% rule. Now, just imagine if you can live off of less than 4%, your portfolio has a greater chance of surviving those 30 years. If you only live off of 1% or 2%, 3%, the point is a lower percent also increases the success rate of your portfolio. So that is the Trinity study and that's what really explains the 4% rule. But let's relate that back to that 25 times your annual expenses in early retirement. If you take that number, now remember we said someone who had, for example, a retirement, a fire number of $1.25 million. If you take that 1.25 example, if you take 4% from that, that is the $50,000 that that person estimated that they would need in early retirement. So we provided this information for a very specific reason to help you establish your goal. You see with your goal, now you can identify how you go about investing to meet that goal. If your goal is financial independence and retire early, calculate your fire number. And with that fire number, you can better understand the timeline it will take you to amass that kind of money in an investment portfolio. The Trinity study also points out risk. It talks about asset allocation, and that is something that we're going to talk about in upcoming modules, but it identifies the mix someone can have in their portfolio between stocks and bonds. These are all things that we're going to talk about in upcoming modules, but just know that we provided this information to you specifically to help you identify your goals for financial independence and retiring early.